Hey, I'm Ajin. You're listening to NUS Radio Pulse, the sound of NUS. With Disney buying over Star Wars and George Lucas feeling depressed and all, I've decided to, you know, pay a little tribute to good old Georgie, you know, for all those years of brilliant Star Wars fun. So get your lightsabers ready, because this week, we are battling evil telemarketers in podcast episode 5, The Call Center Strikes Back. How do these people get our numbers? Now, I don't recall doing any surveys or giving up my numbers to random people on the street. And I'm pretty sure I didn't tick any box which says, Yes, call me. Keep me informed of all promotions and updates. And leave my handphone number at the end of it. I mean, call me boring, call me unadventurous. But I think I'll pass an all-expense-paid trip to exotic Singapore. I mean, seriously. I got a call last year. Hi, sir. My name is Cindy. I'm calling on behalf of Quality Tours Private Limited. How would you like to win an all-expense-paid trip to Singapore? I was like, wow, really? Singapore? All expenses paid? That's right, sir. Would you like to sign up? Yeah, sure. I'd love to sign up. What do I need to send you guys? Ah, so we'll need your address, and if you can make your way down to the nearest book. Where's, what city is your location, sir? City? Um, where, you mean where I stay? Yes, sir. Where do you stay, sir? Singapore. No, now that I think about it, I haven't really heard back from Cindy since then. She must not like me. Anyway, we all get these calls, and as an Asian society, what we tend to do is, you know, we, we're always very polite. We'll say, oh, no, sorry, I'm not interested, and then we'll put down the phone. Oh, yes, yes, I understand, but sorry, I'm not interested. We're always apologizing to these telemarketers. And if you're in a really bad mood, we'll be like, oh, no, sorry, uh, no, and then you just click the phone. You know, hang up straight away. Rarely, rarely do I hear of people actually yelling at call center stuff. I mean, we, we're not that kind of rude people. As Asians, you know, we, we'll still be polite to you if you're facing you one-on-one or if we're talking to you directly on the phone. Or we'll curse the hell out of you once you put down the phone. <laughs> that's, that's a different matter entirely. Or if it's a machine, whoa. <laughs> Machines get a lot of abuse. Poor old R2-D2. I mean, especially those help center machines, you know. They always say, our friendly customer care officers are on hand to help. And when you actually put you through, you don't get to a customer care officer, you get to a machine. And the machine will have the same recorded voice which goes, If you wish to report a problem, please press 3. Please press 1. Please press 4, 1, 5. And before you know it, the machine has you punching in the entire pie from, from the first digit all the way to the 70th digit. And finally, finally, at the end of the whole thing, you get this one option which says, if you wish to speak to our customer care officers, please press zero or something like that. And you finally get put through to the customer care officer thing. And it's another long wait. And they always play classical music, you know. They always play classical music. You know, some kind of misinformed, ill-conceived notion that this classical music is somehow going to soothe the savage beast or something like that, you know. And it's probably why classical music always sounds so familiar to all of us. By the time we get, by the time we actually get through to a customer care service officer, we're probably experts on classical music. You know, we could probably sing you Bach or play Bach on a piano. And if your mood is right, you know, usually if your mood is right while you're listening, while you're waiting for about two hours on hold to classical music, you know, you'll be cursing along to the tune. Like, you know, you could go something like, I am going to kick your fucking ass. And also, I'll kick you in the nuts. Kanina and fucking Kanasai. Why don't you pick up now? Why am I waiting here? I'm going to... Hi. Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. What is the issue you wish to report? Oh, no, don't worry about it. (laughs) It's always the case, you know. Once someone picks up, we're always so polite, like nothing happened. Oh, we weren't cursing or anything like that. We were waiting patiently. Oh, I was waiting two hours? Oh, didn't even notice. Didn't even notice. It's always so polite. But answering these telemarketers and call centers doesn't have to be a bad experience. You know, that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to drive at. You know, it doesn't have to be a negative experience in your life. You know, why not have a bit of fun while we're at it? You know, embrace the dark side of the force. Have a little fun with these telemarketers. You know, they're so they're so keen to call you. Make it worth your time. Make it worth your while. Now, here's some things you could try when you get those calls from, you know, call centers or Bank of China. First thing you can do. Order pizza. Now, those of you, those of you who know me pretty well, you know, I've probably told you this story before. <laughs> During my NS days, I always got every quarter, you know, every, every, 
three months, I'll get a call from Bank of China updating me on their new services and account settings and stuff like that. And always I would I would be, you know, like the, the usual polite Asian kid where it would be like, oh yeah, sorry, no, I'm not interested. Or thank you for calling, but you know, I'm not interested. Or I'm really sorry, I'm not interested. You know, stuff like that, you know. I just say not interested, then I put up the phone, you know. And they kept calling again and again and again. And one day I was feeling kind of pissed off. Well, not really pissed off, like, pro- in a weird mood. I was in a really weird mood that day. Funny, kind of weird mood. And... <laughs> this guy calls me up again and he goes like, Hi, so we have new, uh, if you open an account with us, you get these kind of different privileges and all that. And I was like, oh yeah, sure. Uh, I would like to order a pizza uh, with an extra Coke and a side of chicken wings. <laughs> the guy was stunned. He's like, uh, sir, this is, uh, I'm calling from Bank of China. From Bank of China, we have this details for the account. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, Bank of China, right? Yeah, so I want a Hawaiian pizza. And one with extra pepperoni, you know, make it make it about seven inches, both of them, you know, because I'm not really that hungry. <laughs> and this guy is trying to explain how he's from Bank of China and they don't really serve pizzas. And I just kept ordering pizzas for a good two minutes. <laughs> and after that, he put down the phone and I've never got a call from them since. It is a brilliant way. If you, if you think about it, it's actually a brilliant way. You know, you had a lot of fun and it's a brilliant way to get them to stop calling you back because they think you're some kind of crazy guy. And you don't really care about what they think. I mean, they're miles away. I'm going to affect your job application. Oh, it says here use audit pizza to a telemarketer. Not bad. <laughs> but there's other stuff you can do as well. Playing along. Now, this I like this one a lot. It is super fun to play along and just, just to see where it leads to. You know, just to see how far you can take it. They can't charge you for anything unless you're stupid enough to give them your credit card or bank details. And if they call you on your landline, or better, if you have unlimited Free incoming calls. You have time to kill. Why not? Trolling. It is the hallmark of our generation, you know? Best to get with a program. And it works really even better. It works even better if... It doesn't have to be a call center, you know? It works even better if you get it from, like, a wrong number. You know, you get these these jokers calling you halfway through, you know? It's always the wrong number. They call you once, then you tell them it's the wrong number. And they're like, oh, okay. Then they put... And then they call you again because they don't believe you. Now, when this happens, you know, the first time they call you, you can tell what kind of guy it is. You know, usually you can tell if it's going to be a Chinese guy, Malay guy, Indian guy, or whatever race the guy is. You can tell from the first call. So when they call you that second time, I like, I like to play along as if, oh, they actually really did get through to the guy they wanted to get to. So the Chinese guy, usually they go like, Atana. They're very informal Chinese, you know. So it's like, Atana, or, or, or Lima, or something like that, you know. I think, I go, ah, ah, toy, toy. <laughs> And the guy was start talking. He'd probably be telling me about his problems, his girlfriend problems, his boyfriend problems, any kind of problem. And I just, I just, you know, you just follow the tone of his voice. You know, if he, if he sounds happy, you just go, ah, oh, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, mm, 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 tui, tui, tui. And if he sounds, like, oh, mm, mm, you know, the really deeper, the more the 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 oohs and the ahs and the mmms. You know, you just fill it up with those things. He'll do all the talking. And if you're good, if you're good. Once it's been a good five minutes, you had your fun, you know, you really want to put on the phone, you can start telling him, you know, uh, sorry, I was just playing with you. I was just messing with you, man. I'm not really your friend. You know, I was just playing around. And he won't believe you. <laughs> he won't believe you. He'll really think you're the friend because, you know, you've been, you've been going through with him for a good five minutes. You know, you really believe you're his friend. And, and he'll be like, no, 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 tan, tan, don't play, don't play. And he'll start talking about, he'll start talking about his stuff. And he'll be like, dude, seriously, no, I'm not your friend. I was just playing around, just messing around. And then he'll get it. And then he'll start swearing at you. You keep swearing, swearing, and be like, <laughs> same to you, buddy. Click. <laughs> Come on, it's loads of fun. It's not like he's going to track you down and say, why did you prank me? It's like, dude, you called me once. I told you it was the wrong number. You called me again. What did you want me to do? I didn't want to disappoint you. I mean, you're so, you seem so anxious to call this friend of yours. I couldn't disappoint you. And you could do anything when these kind of people call you. Telemarketers, wrong numbers. When they start calling you, you could fake emergencies. You can start flirting with them. You can even practice your killer pickup lines. You know, if, if you're having a little trouble with the ladies, you don't know, if I say this, will they? how would they reciprocate something like this? And then, you know, these people call and you're like, so how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, so go wild, have fun, you know. 
as a university student, we need to have a lot of fun. And with the current workload and schoolwork piling up, the finals coming up especially, we're going to need a lot of entertainment to, keep, to get us through this period. And we can't just go for a movie now. We'll feel bad. So if the opportunity presents itself, ripe and ready to be plugged, grab it. So the next time you get a call from a call center, remember the wise words of Yoda. Prank them, you must. And deter them, you will. This is Ajay and you've been listening to Podcast 5, The Call Center Strikes Back on NUS Radio Pulse, The Sound of NUS. Have a good week and may the force be with you. Thank you.